think we're live. I think we're live on the internet. So I think the appropriate phrase is salutations, kindred spirits. Hey, welcome to the magic cave. We're back in the saddle after to say we survived another Mardi Gras. It's been about 30 of them at this point in New Orleans. Woo! Never a dull moment here. All right, here we are today uh, discussing card magic. That's right, we're talking card tricks today. So if you don't like card tricks, uh, I don't know how you even got here, first of all, because it's 90% card magic in my universe. But uh, stick around, maybe I can change your mind. Uh, before I get started, though, uh, first and foremost, always a good idea to get the jokers out of the deck. I'll, I'll do this mathematically. So here, you can try this at home. What you do is turn half the deck face up and half the deck face down and then shuffle it in this fashion so that some go, some go this way and some go that way. Some, somewhere in here is the jokers. And what you want to do is you shuffle it. You look through the face up cards trying to find one of the jokers. If you don't see them in the face up pile, that indicates they're probably face down. So to find them, you turn the deck face up. That'll leave the jokers as the only cards face up in the deck. And, and this, is, this is my recommended procedure for finding jokers from a shuffled pack. Now, I don't know how you do it. If you got a better way, you know, drop a line in the comments. <clears throat> so yeah, Cat knows what we're talking about. Heck, it's in the title. Cat Cat's in the house. Welcome back, Cat Cat. We're talking about Triumph today, and that's what you just saw, Triumph. The uh, classic, I guess, a Die Vernon effect. I think he was the one that really put the effect of riding a jumbled pack and making magic happen along the way. Triumph, uh, originally published in Stars of Magic. I learned it from a Stars of Magic videotape, Frank Garcia. And I'm not going to talk a lot about methods today. But I, I, I would like to talk about where you could learn it. So I'm going to guide students like this. I teach this shuffling procedure in a, a tutorial on the Triumph Shuffle. And it, it's basically a false shuffle, right? So it looks like you're shuffling the deck face down and face up. But you're really not. You're controlling the cards. In fact, you're controlling the whole deck. And as we segue into the next trick, I'll, I'll use this to my advantage. But I explained this triumph procedure in one of my tutorials, so I don't see a need to go into any more detail today. In fact, there's a link in the description if you want to learn how to do Die Vernon's original. Now, I do want to talk about a couple of easy methods, a couple of easy methods that you can do, as I want to say, of course, hello to Morgus Man, Goldbug, always great to see you in the house, and uh, Jason Y, I see you there as well, and Jonathan, howdy chat. All right, so here we're going to do this. I'm going to do a couple tricks that I've never done. Uh, well, on this stream, I've done them in my life, but I haven't done them recently. They're great tricks. They're easy tricks. So if you want a good, easy uh, triumph to add to your repertoire, I'm about to give you two of them, or at least give you options to learn two of them. And uh, I'll talk about this one as I do it. This was created by a magician named John Bannon. And if you like card magic and you're not familiar with the name John Bannon, well, you're doing yourself a disservice. <clears throat> John Bannon, this was in his first book published, I guess, in the early 90s. He had the notion of this. Let me get a card. He would have a spectator pick a card, and then he would shuffle the deck face up and face down. And, and again, this is from Impossibilia. Uh, we'll take questions later, Supreme. And howdy, Gary. Welcome to the stream. So look, we're shuffling cards face up and face down so that some go this way, some go that way. Again, face up and face down cards being shuffled together. The finale here revolves around you trying to find the spectator's card. And as you say, wouldn't it be amazing if I could find your card? Your spectator says, well, I never put my card back in the deck. And then feigning surprise, you say, oh, okay, well, how about if I find the other cards then? What suit is yours? And they look at the card and they say, well, my card is a heart. And you say, fine, I'll, I'll just find all of the other hearts in the deck. Yeah, I'll find all the other hearts in the deck. That's the ace, the two, the three, the four, the five, the seven, uh-oh, the eight, the nine, the 10, the jack, the queen, the king of hearts. Looks like we're missing the six of hearts. And when the spectator reveals the freely selected card, and it is freely selected for the most part. That is the uh, missing card in question. And this is John Bannon's Play It Straight Triumph. Now, 
To make a long story short, if you stack that sequence of hearts and uh, do exactly what you just saw me do, you'll be doing this trick, but you'd be doing yourself a disservice if you didn't study it properly and maybe track down the book I mentioned, Impossibilia, or, you know, a good resource for this trick, Micah Mars Easy to Master Card Miracles. This is a video series that he published back in the uh, 90s, a lot of good magic coming out in the 90s. And he, he kind of cataloged a lot of good magic that's on that series. And you could probably even find that download separately. It's probably also exposed nefariously on new YouTube. So note that I did this for our agenda today. I did make a list. This is what this is what we're going to be talking about through the uh, through the afternoon for the next 15 minutes. What we did Vernon's Triumph. We did Bannon's Play It Straight. And uh, here's some visual references if you want to go Google it or, uh, you know, consult Magic Cafe or whatever you do to do your own magic resource. That cat asked if I like appearing cards out of thin air. Uh, generally a stage technique and one I've never really been enamored with enough to learn. So, and again, we'll take more questions after I get through this agenda. I'm just going to plow through it, guys. I'm just going to do a bunch of card tricks. And if that bothers you, again, you're in the wrong stream. So I, I do I do I do want to mention though that sequence that that Bannon's play it straight. I had this whole setup on top of the deck the whole time that I was doing the triumph with the Jokers. So again, the, the Vernon original. Why am I doing it this way? The Vernon original triumph is a false shuffle, which allows you to do triumph and then have another trick pre-stacked ready to go. So that's a word to the wise. All right, so here again, our topic, our topic is easy triumphs. Remember, easy triumphs. And this, <laughs> this is this is one that I learned from one of my mentors, John Rockerbomber. This uses the Tenkai Optical Revolve, which we'll talk more about in a moment. First of all, let's talk about this. Hey, Jason, thank you very much for that super chat. Hey, always. Supporting the Vanishing Arts. Thank you, Jason Y. So Rocker Bomber would do this. He would take half of the deck, and this is pretty convincing, right? You turn half of the deck face up, and then you shuffle it into the face up pile. And I'm gonna do this very fair. You can, you can see like, this is not a false shuffle. Those cards are actually being mixed face up and face down. Furthermore, you could cut the deck and you could here you can see their face up and face down. Now that is a mix. And I'm going to mix it further in the following fashion. Flip flopping it. And this is the name of this triumph, the flip flop triumph. You just flip and flop the cards around. When you're ready for your de denouement, you do whatever magic moment you'd like. I'll do this one because I need the four aces and that's what that does. Yeah, it finds the four aces. That's all, all the deck corrected except for the cards you might need to introduce your next effect. And this is John Rocker Bomber's Flip Flop Triumph. Now, this is not one that you'll be easy to find in just random downloads. But look, we're going to talk about the Tenkai Optical Revolve. And if you listen to what I tell you, and again, follow what I do, you'll be able to do what uh, I do without too much effort. Now, the Tenkai Optical Revolve, let, let me just make this simplified if you're interested. If you're not, this is a good time to plug your ears and start hanging, singing tunes. The Optical Revolve has a card upside down on the bottom of the deck, okay? One card upside down. So, like, say we're doing the Joker presentation, you could put a Joker there. Took the Jokers out. It could be a selected card, it could be anything, but let's say one card is upside down on the bottom of the deck. This is the Tenkai, this is the Tenkai Optical Revolve. As you lift the top half of the deck, both hands rotate. Because you have a card reversed on the bottom of the deck, this gives the illusion that you're turning over just half of the pack. What this means is when you shuffle this half into this half, well, all you're doing is shuffling under that one reversed card. Now, imagine that's four aces that are reversed. Yeah, four aces reversed there. So here I am cutting the top half and doing the Tenkai Optical Revolve, which at real speed looks like this. Then I spread the face up half to reinforce that half's face up. I just shuffle under that top card in this case, 
but it really looks like you're shuffling face up cards and face down. And then to do the flip flop part, all you have to do is this. Turn over the part you cut to the left. Turn it over. So you cut half of the deck to the left and turn it over. And then you're going to drop off about a quarter of the packet as you crisscross the hands. And this is going to leave you in a position to flip flop the packets down and then to marry them together. And at that point, you'll have whatever reversed card appear, or in the case of the aces, the reversed aces appear. And Alan's asking a great question, which of which of John Rockerbomber's books is this in? So John described this in, in his first set of lecture notes, probably hard to find, also in a book called Arc Triumph, which is a book of triumph. There's like a dozen of them in there of the, I think, 400 versions out there. What I'm showing you today are the ones I think have value, particularly to a beginner or a novice student. Uh, certainly the Vernon original, the Tenkai Optical Revolve is a great one. And uh, let me give you this too. Look, this, here's our bonus advice that isn't on my agenda. If you have an odd colored card, do I have one? Sure I do. So if I have a red card, okay, and it's here, now, now I can do a shuffle that implies I'm shuffling face up cards into a face down red deck. And then through the use of tilt, I can imply that I have cards that are face down and face up. And remember, I only have one red card here. But this notion, which is a Paul Harris notion, gives the implication that a, a red deck has been triumphed and then the deck changes color. What? And uh, this is not in my active repertoire, but walking or talking through this, this is just gives you an idea how you can use something like the Tenkai Optical Revolve and amplify it to a color changing deck effect. It's, it's called Color Stunner, I think is the Paul Harris title, and Funner Color Stunner by David Williamson is uh, well worth study, as is everything David Williamson publishes. So yeah, Tenkai Optical Revolve. Did I have something? I think that's all I wanted to talk about that. Maybe this, while I take a glass of water, a sip of water, if there's anyone that has a question about what I've talked about so far, this would be a good time to get it in. Hey, John, welcome to the event. Good to see members live always. <clears throat> Jamie, what's up? Or oh, I said, I said Jamie. Jimmy. Jimmy Ferris, you're in the house. Hey, that optical revolve with the flip-flop, that's a good one. We haven't done the best one yet. That's coming up. I'm, I'm going to do the best triumph next. So. Thanks, Kat. I've worked real hard most of my life. I love the art. And I try to get it right. Uh, wait, any questions? Hey, Jesse Chaplin in the house. What's up, Jesse? So of all the triumphs I've done here, what we're doing is talking about tabled triumphs. So Gary's asking about my book. Uh, no, I don't. Unfortunately, the author passed away late last year. There was a stockpile of the books that made it to a dumpster. I'm not going to talk more about it. I do hope to republish it myself. Uh, if you really want, 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 want it, I've got a PDF. If you email me, I can get you the PDF. Hello from Germany. Good day to you. All right. <clears throat> no one seems to be uh, asking about the... Yeah, if you're... yeah. You... I'm giving you some great tricks. Wait till you see this one. All right, this is the best one. I, I've done this before. Can I go over the flip-flop sequence again? You know, I'll do it slowly and reluctantly because this, this, this particular broadcast is not in the spirit of teaching exact routines. I'm more here in the spirit of teaching or, or getting you excited about concepts and then, and then uh, having to hunt them down yourself which is what I had to do when I was a young Jedi. But I do understand that uh, some of these uh, things I'm referencing are esoteric and you're not gonna find the reference for this. So yeah, I'll show you. The, the ace is again on the bottom. So you can start from the top. You can fall shuffle the top part, right? Just leaving the aces down here. Probably a tabled shuffle is a good option for this. Do the optical revolve, which is grabbing from biddle grip and revolving both hands and then shuffle under the four aces on the left-hand side. So here's the flip-flop sequence. I cut from the, from the bottom to the left and turn that over. 
from the bottom to the left and turn that over. Now as I crisscross my hands, dropping off packets, about a quarter of each stack, it'll, it'll decrease, right? So I'm gonna drop a quarter, crisscross the hands, drop a quarter or whatever it is, drop some, crisscross the hands, drop some. You wanna leave the aces probably together, I guess they're over here, right? So don't drop two, you know, make sure you leave all the aces here. And then to correct it, you're gonna flip things downward. So you're gonna flip it here, and here, and then here. And then this is a great Richard Kaufman strategy. I guess, I guess this was in Rocket Bomber's original. It's a great way to correct a Triumph mix. And, and now it's done. I, there, this is a little, it leaves it a little off centered, right? So I do give it a cut to centralize the mix a little better. That way when you do the spread to show the aces are the only ones face up there, it's more pronounced in the middle. Depends on how you reassemble the packets, but that's the, that's the scoop. That's the skit, as John would say, onward. And Rocker Bomber, thank you for everything. The least of which is card tricks. This is a man that made a big difference in my life, John Rocker Bomber. I've talked about him briefly on the platforms. Not a lot, not as much as I should. Okay, so Johnny's asking this, which triumphs do I use usually? So that's a good question, Johnny. So if I'm working on the table, always this one. This is the Vernon original, and this allows you to show the deck in this fashion immediately square it, and then through this cutting sequence, get to where you need to be, which is here. A lot of people will opt for the zero shuffle for this, and that's fine. This is this is how the zero might look, so I shuffle these cards to, whoops, out of hanger. This is, this is not why I, this is why I don't use the zero always. So that's a zero mix, kind of, sort of, leaves you the same, same position. I, I'm not no good zero shuffler. The one that I perform, if I'm performing the triumph effect, it's this one. Hey, Sean, good to see you, bro. So let's get a selected card. I'm just gonna use the Ace of Spades. It'll be like our target card. Let's go to the good camera as we do this. So let's pretend this, and let me get this ready because this is, this is how we really make this effect much better. This is where we take this effect from good into what? Everybody always wants me to do the hard stuff. All right, so this, in my opinion, is the best triumph. Let's do it. And it starts, as most triumphs do, you have someone, I have someone touch a card. So I'll pretend like you're right in front of me. I just say, touch a card, and we'll put it here for just a moment. Okay, that's long enough. Now, we'll need to know what that card is. If you can tell without looking, I'll watch you work. It's everything a joke is, but funny. Your spectator looks at the card, so we're gonna look at what it is. Of course, it's the Ace of Spades. And that card will lose with the upside down, all around poker shuffle. Yeah, the upside down, all around poker shuffle. It's a little known and underused ruse devised to find the selected card. Not on bottom, not on top. Here comes the shuffle. It's a very refined technique that allows you to, uh, <laughs> let me just, the illusion of clumsiness is important when you do the magic. So uh, sometimes, sometimes you, if some of them are face to face, some of the, maybe I got lucky, it's right on top, the four of hearts. And your, your spectator will say, that's not my card. Well, I, I didn't say it was your card. I just said it's right on top, the four, the four of hearts. To find your card, I'm going to use a little ancient technique known as time travel. And I'm going to allow the uh, viewers at home to represent, to, 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 to watch this happen visually. You want to watch the time. I'm going to go back about three, about three minutes. Ah, there we go. About three minutes, 319. In fact, if you check your watches at home, it's 319. Maybe someone in chat will confirm that. It is, we did go back there, right? If we did go back to 319, that should take us back to when all of the cards face the same direction. Remember before I shuffled them face up and face down? Back, back when the selected card wasn't even in the deck yet. And that makes this not only a good trick, but a good time saver. And that's Jay Sankey's Back in Time. Thank you, Jay Sankey. Uh, note the, note the, 
Okay, if you're not in the states, I guess <laughs> I, I should note, if you're not in central time, this isn't going to work for you. <clears throat> yeah, if you're not in central, central time specifically. Note to self, that trick's only good if it's live. But uh, I'm super excited about that. Uh, what's the that's Patrick Kuhn's timeline available for iOS only it's price for the professional um note to self no more time travel tricks because my audience is international all right regardless regardless of this <laughs> and that's that's something I'm even more excited about as my Apple Watch is arriving this weekend. Apple Watch is arriving this weekend, so we can do now we can do in, incognito things. We can do timeline things, which we can activate that app not being near it. And uh, super excited. I'm not going to talk about it. I'm just going to do it. Uh, I did have another cool trick planned. I don't know if I'm going to do it. I'm going to switch to Q&A. Let me just briefly mention the method here. And this, this goes back. I think a lot of you probably have this book, the, the book I recommend for all students, the Mark Wilson Complete Course in Magic. Mark describes the method for this trick, which is a great, uh, even just a great opener. Like, you don't have to use it as a selected card trick. You could do this. You could say, Look, I'm going to mix the cards up before we do the magic. So some people just shuffle them this way. I'm going to shuffle them this way. So I'm going to take some uh, face down and some face up. Some go backwards. Yeah, you know, like some are this way, some are that way. And then to start the magic, we're just going to fix everything. I think I lost one there. Back the way we started, except for the mess. The idea being you can use slop shuffle to introduce the uh, a series of magic. Yes, I can full Siri. In fact, I'll do I'll do a Siri trick as our as our finale. You know, let me let me just briefly talk about the slop shuffle. It's just turning cards over from the top onto the top. You just turn them over like this, and all this is doing is putting cards back to back. Now, when I do this, I like to spill a few out, then I can go back and put them where they need to be. But really, it's just the top half is face up, the bottom half is face down. This is, I believe it's Sid Lorraine, Sid Lorraine's slop shuffle. And the sloppier you can make it look, you know, the more it looks like you're really just, and if you drop a few, like I said, and then you go jamming these cards back in upside down, it's just going with its, you know, and, and uh, then you just cut at the natural break. There'll be a natural back-to-back -back break, and when you flip them over, the, uh, the deck is all the same way. Slop shuffle. You can Google that one. It's on YouTube a lot. Get a better teaching than I just did, but that's a good, easy one that you can learn as well. So there, there's your answer to what I use in the real world. I use Jay Sankey's Back in Time if I'm doing In the Hands. And if you watch the Jay Sankey tutorial, Jay has taught this trick, and I put a description, a link in the description down there. So you go watch Jay teach it. He'll tell you how to do it stand up, no table. It's a great trick. I saw him lecture on it about 20 years ago. Started doing it that night. I've been doing it my whole life since. It's a good one. The, uh, yeah, well worth your time, that one. I'm, re I'm reflecting on Jay Sankey's lecture. That was a great lecture that day. It's, yeah, it's a good one, man, the slop shuffle. And again, go look at the Jay Sankey back in time description. Uh, the, the, the app I'm more excited about is iThump or iToxic, which is a version, it's a calculator thing to answer your question. And uh, I'm not going to say more about it than that. Is there a Doug Kahn Triumph? So, you know, I've published some stuff on Triumph like this. I, I mentioned my tutorial er earlier. Let me quickly do, uh, we'll do this. This is my handling for triumph. So I shuffle the deck face up and face down. I show the cards mixed. And then I use this for a mixing procedure. I do this. It's a little more chaotic procedure. Follow it up with this. That's it. That was from yesterday. I'm having a good day. Oh, I should mention this too. Hey guys, at four o'clock, before I get going here, I'm going to do a members event. If you're not a member, you can be. You can be a member for a dollar. Support the Vanishing Arts. 
five bucks get you uh, access to advanced tutorials. Again, those descriptions are in the link below. We're doing unboxings today at four o'clock. Like, you know, what I do is gather the new paraphernalia, the magic wares that come across my deck, de desk, my deck. I said deck. I come across my desk. And uh, once a month or so, I do an unboxing. I got the new Thin Air. This is an interesting prop. It's good, but not for everyone. Jason, what are you doing with that? Thanks again, brother. You know, I, the phrase not worthy comes to mind, but frankly, I can use the money. So thank you. Speaking of money, if you want to give me some of your money, but not just like super chat it, you can go to conjure.com. You can buy stuff there. I have magic tricks and books like the Mark Wilson book. I got that, a bunch of trick decks and things. Don't want to dwell on about it, but if you want to like, you know, support my efforts, those are ways that you can do it. Spectrum, thanks for the kind words. Let me get this loosely set up here with very little hope that this will work, but I'm going to try it. Uh, yeah, there, right now there's like 20 tutorials in the membership, so that's a pretty good value. And then you get the live events too. If you're, you know, you get the unboxing. Sometimes I do tutorial events on the lives. And if, you, if you're a short viewer and not aware that I have a catalog of long form tutorials and such, well, check out the links in the descriptions and, and start doing that. How do I like thin air? I love it, but I'm a social media magician. If you're not a social media magician, you might not love it as much. Matthew, my birthday's in August, August 21st. Old bug is earning his money. The check's in the mail, bro. Thanks again. Do I have a Siri here? Do I don't have a Siri. Someone, Cat Cat mentioned I could fool Siri. I'm just going to have to fool the audience. Here's one more version of Triumph. It's unlikely that this will work, but if it does, I'll need the Joker. If this does work, it's a good one. Now look, 52 different cards. So yeah, if you don't have money, just, you know, appease the algorithm. Drop some likes, drop some comments, share my efforts occasionally. 52 possibilities. This one can be done with any card in the deck. Now, before I use any card in the deck, oh, you're close, August the 31st. I'm going to shuffle every card in the deck, face up and face down. Look. Perfect. You can see the decks being mixed. That's not an illusion, folks. That's a mess. So the advantage of this procedure is it works with any card. And I will use any card right now if someone will type a card into the chat. The first card that's typed into chat is the card that I'll use. Currently wondering where the Joker went. <laughs> I'm holding out here for just a moment, but you guys uh, type a card in, and if you can hurry up, I'd appreciate it. I'm in an awkward, situa awkward situation right now. I don't wanna, the Four of Hearts. Thank you, Cat. Wow, that was just like we rehearsed. All right, for the Four of Hearts, hey, if you're not typing Four of Hearts, you're typing the wrong card. That was the first one named. For the Four of Hearts, I just cast a shadow over the deck. And now every card in the deck, except for the Joker, <laughs> I wondered where that was. Every card in the deck, except for the four of hearts. Yeah, that's every card facing the same direction. One card not, the freely named four of hearts. And that's 99% magical. Hey, for a bonus trick I never do, that turned out pretty well. So that might be the ultimate version of the invisible deck. This is a, a deck of cards that is honestly shuffled face up and face down. Your spectator merely names a card, and that card is the only card upside down. DMC thinks cat is a plant. Hey, DMC, what card would you name? So if I'd ask you to name a card, and let's let DMC do this. What card would you have said? Yeah, some of you are familiar with the Ultra Mental deck. 
the the precursor to this actually i think i labeled it is the uh steve bedwell steve bedwell's shaken not stirred hey dmc we're waiting on you to name a card today so uh shaken not stirred and what what he would do is put the cards in and some tumblers and shake the deck around inside glasses dmc doesn't want to play john, john allen's ready to play okay seven of clubs like i said except for the except for the joker and we're going to find one card upside down in this deck. Only one card is upside down. And buddy, you could have said anything. I don't think you're a plant. This is the power of the Ultra Mental deck. Or what's more popularly, Mogus is spoiler in the chat. I was going to spoil it anyway. It's, that's the invisible deck. So this is a combination of gaff and skill. So what I did there, do I have a uh, labeled... I have one of these. These are one of the things that I sell at conjure.com. Capitalism and act action. So what I do is I Pharaoh shuffle using my skill into the gaff setup. So I can do a shuffle into the invisible deck setup. And if you look up the Steve Bedwell, did I mention him in the credits? Let's look at our credits one more time. Yeah, look at the bottom there. Bedwell's, there it is, shaken, not stirred. So that's everything you need to know that I talked about today. And wow, look at us pulling in right here at a nice tight 30 minutes. About exactly where I wanted to be. Yeah, hey, if you, oops, if you want to introduce yourself to the world of gaff card magic, you can do no better than getting an invisible deck. It, it is my favorite card trick. Everyone should know that by now. Yeah, there. I, I don't use plants. You don't, why would I use plants? I don't need that. I mean, I guess I might use plants, but I never have. It's not my style. All right, if anybody else has anything they want to talk about, preferably Triumph related, but if you have another topic, I'm here for a few more minutes for you. Yes, D DMC is on the payroll as well. Your 239 is on the way. That's top, top dollar for my office. Use any card you want. Don't show it to us. Uh, Time for a burrito. Yeah, that's about where I'm at, brother. I actually have got to do this. I've got to turn around and, and prep for the membership unboxing. It'll be at 4 p.m. Central, so about a half hour from now, I'll be live again on the platform. Uh, and note the member sessions, uh, generally not well attended, right? Because I only have like, I don't know, 100 members, and that's fine. But what I'm saying here, because they're not well attended, it's a great time that if you do want to have some more uh, one-on-one -on -one time with me, or if you have questions or something you want to get my opinion on, these live sessions are a great time to do it for members. While I will not always divulge the secrets of the universe on the open platform of YouTube, always happy to do so for kindred spirits behind closed doors. And as long as I know I'm teaching, you know, a thoughtful student, I will do that. So do I have a book recommendation? I do. I've got about half a dozen of them at conjure.com. Uh, the best one to start with, as I mentioned, is the Mark Wilson course. I did just add the Josh J complete course to our uh, catalog. If you're interested in card magic, expert card techniques, a good resource for coin tricks, Bobo's coin magic. But there's a few to look at there as, if you don't mind clicking the link away. Good to see you, Gold Dog, and I hope to see you again in about a half hour. Could be a fun one. I got some interesting props to look at. Cameron, a pleasure. It's truly my pleasure to have an audience, and I thank you for watching. Everyone for watching. There's a lot of you watching today, and I appreciate it. Gary asks if I'm in New Orleans. I'm, I'm right outside of New Orleans in Kenner. So I spent most of my adult life in Orleans Parish. A lot of it in the French Quarter and most of it in Algiers Point, where I would ride the ferry, take the ferry over the Mississippi River into the uh, French Quarter. But yeah, I'm in New Orleans, basically. NOLA. Yep. I'll be in the French Quarter this weekend for St. Patrick's Day. It's going to be cold and rainy Saturday, but Sunday's looking good. That's the day before St. Patrick's Day, and this city parties hard this time of year. I'm going to go out there and put my hat in the arena, be part of the madness, and 
hopefully we'll have some footage for the masses to bring you on the short forms and etc. Appreciate you all. Thanks for the kind words, everyone. Yes, I'm a I'm a fan of plants. I'm a fan of plants, indeed. All right, y'all. Look, I guess we're done. I'm going to say thanks, guys. Oh, there's a question. Here we go. One last question. Uh, do I break in your deck of cards? Every time I, every single time I open a deck, I'm probably going to give it about 20 of these. Oh, this is my invisible deck. Hold on. <laughs> I'll only give your invisible deck one of those if you're ready to go. So I'll probably give it right out of the box. I'm going to give it like 20 pharaohs. And as I give it the pharaohs, I'm going to turn it face up and face down. So I'm alternating. Then I'll probably give it like 20 of these, right? Occasionally giving it a few of these. By the time about 50, 60 shuffles, I'm ready to go. So that's how I break in a deck of cards. Brainwave tutorial. John, that's a challenge for me, you know, because uh, I don't do that trick professionally. I, I added that trick to our catalog, number one, knowing it's good. Number two, because my uh, distributor ran out of invisible decks over, over Christmas break. I just decided to keep it because it's a classic. And I do have a version of that trick that I'll be releasing soon based on the diary, the diary trick, Alex Elmsley's trick that turns the brainwave trick into a birthday card birthday prediction. So I'll, re I'll release that on the platform. How about that for a promise? In the reasonably near future, I will deliver my brainwave application to uh, the membership of YouTube. Alan, you're in Algiers Point? For real? You're, you're near Mark Aspiazu and John Rockerbomber? And you're almost in Steve Reynolds territory. You're in the land of Rockerbomber lives in Algiers Point. I know that because I visited him with him on a weekly basis for the better part of 10 years. <clears throat> yeah, Taylor, last weekend I took off. The Mardi Gras season burned me out, and I'd been really busy at home, so I just had to, like, take, take time for myself, you know? Uh, what do they call it? Mental health days. Yes, the entire chat is the play -up. None of this is real. It's like the Truman Show, DMC. You're the only real one. Yeah, hang on to that brainwave deck, Jimmy. I'll put it to use. All right, y'all. Look, it's going to be a wrap. I'm going to go drink some mana juice, get these props organized. I'll be doing the David Solomon Technicolor Oil and Water. Ugh. Yeah, that's what I've been working on. I'm going to try and do that one. I'll get, run through that once or twice. We'll talk about thin air and some of the other props I got. Members, I'll see you soon. Everyone else, thanks again, and I'll see you maybe next week. I am looking to get some long-form performances on the, on the platform. But for now, this was a good time. Thank you all for being part of it. Appreciate the energy. See you on the next one.